The earthquake itself is this very brief event, but it's expanded in time in the form of the coronal hull. So the, the coronal hull itself is a time expanded version of the earthquake as it relates to the disturbance in the common carrier that moves the earth around the sun. So <laughs> go figure. Um, but that's, I mean, that's how I'm looking at it. That's how I'm analyzing it and it works. And so, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not pimping out the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Soho data feed to, to make the, to make it match the earthquakes. And I'm definitely not messing with the uh, USGS uh, data feed. I've been waiting to do a, a tutorial on this until I was absolutely sure that, th that these things are actually what they appear to be and that I'm actually analyzing this correctly. And it looks correct. I mean, it's totally consistent with the other observation of the sun grazing comet. It's the same mechanism. It's the same mechanism that is the fabric of space-time at work. And it's, it's consistent with every observation I've made. The coronal mass ejection is a time compressed version of a cyclonic storm. That outward movement of the, of the ejection of the coronal mass is actually associated, if you use the right hand rule, Justin, uh, with, a, with the, the uh, associated torque on what is the hydrogen on the earth. And so there's this, that represents this, the, the ejections represent this huge cyclonic movement and the storm that's associated with that with that C2 um, uh, mass ejection that you observed is in the southern hemisphere and it is uh, Hamish, uh, P18 Hamish. And it's a cyclone, it's a tropical cyclone and it's just dissipating. If I would have had time to say, oh look, there was a, uh, a coronal uh, mass ejection, there's gonna be a tropical cyclone. Occasionally I do that. If you watch the coronal mass ejections, you can see uh, ahead of time, the, the formation of the tropical cyclones through that same hypersymmetric um, uh, activity. But a mass is very different than a higher frequency disturbance. When you look at the extreme X-ray image of the sun, the the one that you can see the coronal holes in, either from Hanoda or from or from uh, Soho, either one, what you're looking at is X-ray band, a narrow a narrow X-ray band. And when you see a hole. This is another thing. If you see a hole that extends through the other X-ray bands, if, if you see if you see one that's in um, in multiple bands, that's going to be a deep earthquake. And th if the coronal holes from this particular earthqu earthquake, the reason I said that it's going to be deep is because it affects it simultaneously is affecting all of those bands that we were imaging the sun in, and so it, it becomes a deep. Um, uh, uh, quake at that point. This is an interesting thing and I, I really want to encourage you to learn how to use it because it's, um, <laughs> it has a lot of potential and if you could, I mean, if you could, if, since you saw the thing with the moon, you know, it might be very, it might be very well that you might be able to see a way to do the hyper time mapping that I haven't seen. Having another set of eyes on things um, is, is absolutely key for these kinds of, these kinds of things and sorting these things out. So thanks a lot and take care.